Hi, I'm Joshua Farnsworth, and right now I'm going to show you how to make a tongue and groove joint with a hand plane and also with a power router. And I'll talk about the pros and cons of each method. A tongue and groove joint is commonly used in applications like wood flooring, the bottoms of blanket and tool chests, and the backs of traditional cupboards. It consists of a tongue board that inserts into a groove, and this allows for seasonal expansion and contraction as the humidity in the air changes. The joint doesn't have to fit tightly as long as it overlaps, and it's preferable that the tongue is shorter than the groove so that the joint isn't pushed apart in higher humidity. Next I'll talk about the tools used to cut a tongue and groove joint. In the description below I'll include brand names and links to all the new and antique tools shown in this video. Historically this joint was cut using tongue and groove planes. And as you can see there are several styles of tongue and groove planes, all of which are really fun to use. The oldest style that I own is a matched pair where one hand plane cuts the tongue and the other plane cuts the groove. This is actually my favorite way to cut the joint because of the comfort and stability of the plane. However, a good set may not be that easy to find, so let's talk about some others. The next style is called a come and go plane. You cut the tongue by pushing the plane one way and you cut the groove by pushing the plane the other way. The plane originally came with a wooden body but was replaced uh, by a metal version in the late 1800s. The most readily available tongue and groove plane is called a swing arm plane and these models are quite easy to find. So let's jump into using a tongue and groove plane to cut this joint. Whether you're using a hand plane or a power router, make sure you have perfectly squared boards and make sure they're longer than your final length so you can cut off any plane tear out or router snipe. Orient your boards to cut with the grain as much as possible. So use your piece of wood with the most favorable grain for the tongue since the shoulders will be visible after the cut. Place the tongue board on the left and the groove board on the right and make a note of which board is which. Orient it to plane with the grain. The board with the less desirable grain can be used for the groove since most tear out will be hidden in the center of the joint anyway. The tongue board lifts up directly into the vise with the pencil mark facing you. Plane the tongue on this board, being sure to keep the plane straight up and the fence snug against the face of the board. When the plane stops cutting, you're finished. Now for the groove board. When lifting it up, make sure the mark is facing you, but flip it upside down. Now plane the groove until the plane stops cutting. A finer, less aggressive cut requires more pushes of the plane, but hey, exercise isn't bad. You can even skip your goat yoga for the day. Notice the joint doesn't fit perfectly tight, but as I mentioned earlier, that's alright because tongue and groove boards are typically nailed. Now let's talk about the tools needed for cutting the tongue and groove joint with a power router. A tongue and groove joint can be cut a couple different ways on the router, but I'm going to demonstrate it using a tongue and groove bit set. Whiteside sent me these excellent router bits to try out and they really work fantastic. And I think most woodworkers would agree that Whiteside really does make the best router bits. I place my router bits 
inside the router, which is held tightly in the router motor. And then the router motor is held upside down in the router table. You can either build your own router table, which I've done, or you can buy a router table like this, which I really prefer because of all the bells and whistles and, and ways you can align everything. And then hooking up a shop vac to the back of the router table is really essential to keep the wood chips from flying everywhere. Before setting anything up, make sure you unplug the router motor. Get out your router bit and install it in the collet, bringing the bit up slightly from bottoming out. Just make sure you read your router's user manual thoroughly for instructions on how to tighten the bit in the collet and do your other setup. Bring your fence level with the bearing on your router bit or slightly towards you to make your tongue a bit shorter. Tighten down the fence so it won't move while you're pushing wood through the router and hook up the shop vac while you're back there. I like to use a marking gauge or a combination square to find the center of the board. I mark from each side of the board and then the space right in the middle of the two gauge marks is the board center. I mark it with a marker or a dark pencil that I can see easily. Then I place the board against the tongue router bit and I use a micro adjuster to raise the bit. If it doesn't turn that means you probably need to unlock the quick clamp on your router's base. Adjust the router bit up or down until the marker line aligns in the center of the router bit's tongue opening. Move the fence facing so that there is minimal space on either side of the router bit. This will give you a cleaner cut. Attach any safety feature like a guard or a feather board, and most importantly, Always remember to use safety glasses and hearing protection. Finally, you can plug the router back in and then flip on the power switch. The switch on my router table controls both the router motor and the shop vac, which is really convenient. Then feed the wood through the router bit, keeping it tight against the fence and moving it in a right to left direction. This is really important. Then replace the tongue bit with the groove bit. Place your tongue board next to the bit's cutter and center the cutter on the tongue. Follow the same steps and safety precautions for running the groove board through the router bit. This joint looks pretty good but it usually takes a couple tries to dial in the right bit height. So definitely do some test cuts on boards that are the same thickness as your workpiece. And definitely don't worry if you can't get a perfect alignment. Most woodworkers and floor installers plan on having to plane or sand down the boards a bit anyway. Since this is a test board for my wood flooring, I'll either plane the tongue a little lower or set the router table fence to cut it a little shorter. And I do this to allow for expansion and contraction so it doesn't push the joint open when the humidity changes. Let's talk about some of the pros of using a tongue of groove plane. It's definitely faster than using machines if you're just doing one or two joints. It's quiet, it's a lot safer, I think it's a lot more fun. It's got a historical element to it and it's definitely inexpensive. Now let's talk about some cons of using a tongue and groove planes. Using a plane is definitely much slower if you're doing a lot of wood, like on wood flooring. If your tool is vintage, the setup and sharpening time can take a while usually. Often the grain is difficult to work with, even if you think you're cutting with the grain, and you can get some tear out. The joint can be difficult to fit if your plane doesn't stay completely vertical. It takes practice. Even with practice, this method still often requires some adjusting with a shoulder plane afterwards to get it to fit right. Unless your stock is the right size for the plane, the joint won't be centered in the board. But this is not a huge problem. Using a tongue and groove plane can definitely be tiring on your hands. Now for the pros of using a router. A router is really a lot faster if you're cutting a lot of wood. It's easier to be accurate and often better fitting joints after you've got it dialed in. And the fast rotation of the sharp cutters definitely works better with difficult grain. Now for the cons of using a router to cut a tongue and groove joint. 
It takes more time to set up than a tongue and groove plane. It can be a lot more expensive option if you don't already have a router and a router table and the router bits. It can be dangerous if you don't use safety precautions. And finally, it's definitely a lot louder and it can be a lot messier if you don't use proper dust extraction. Well, I sure had a lot of fun making these tongue and groove joints, both with the hand planes and with the router. And what I want you to take away from this is that one way is not necessarily better than the other. It all depends on the job you have at hand and what kind of mood you're in. If, if I've got a small chest that I'm building a bottom for, I'll definitely use the tongue and groove planes. Uh, if I've got a whole bunch of uh, flooring to make, which I actually do, I'm definitely going to use the power router. So if this has been helpful to you, please uh, subscribe to this channel. Uh, visit woodandshop.com for a lot of great other resources on woodworking, and thanks for watching. This is Joshua Farnsworth. If you're interested in woodworking with a mix of hand tools and power tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com, where you can find a bunch of free woodworking lessons, workshop tours of amazing woodworkers, and our very popular tool buying guides. You can ask questions and share your projects with thousands of woodworkers on my forum. Make sure you subscribe to my free newsletter and check out my 10 steps for getting started in woodworking. Enjoy!